for problem number seven, we want to invert A. And it looked to me like A didn't have any special kind of properties, and I didn't remember the formula for inverting a three by three. So I decided to use gauss jordan method for finding the inverse, and I appended A with the identity matrix. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is to zero the entries below the diagonal in the first row. So as usual, we find the multipliers and come up with the Gauss transform that will do this. In this particular case, it's going to be 1, 0, 0. The multiplier here is negative 2, so we'll have a 2 below the 1 here. And the multiplier here is 2, so this will be negative 2. And that's our Gauss transform. When I multiply the matrix by this transform, this becomes 2, 2, negative 6, 1, 0, 0. The first row stays the same. The second row becomes, well, what we're going to do is multiply the first row by 2 and add it to the second, which means we'll have 2 times 2, which is 4, plus negative 4 is 0, which is what we wanted. 2 times 2 is 4, plus negative 5 is negative 1. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, plus 14 is plus 2, positive 2. Then we have 2 times 1 is 2 plus 0 gives us a 2 here. 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 times 0 plus 0 is 0. So that's the second row after we performed our update. The third row is found by taking the first row, multiplying by negative 2, and adding it to the third row. So we'll have 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 4 is 0, as we wished. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 3 is negative 1. Then um, negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12, minus 9 is positive 3. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 0, gives us a negative 2 here. And then negative 2 times 0 plus 0 is 0. And negative 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. So our first step is done. Now what we'd like to do is to zero out again the element below the diagonal here in, in the third row, but also zero out the element above the diagonal in the first row, second column. And so to do this, I'm going to multiply by, well, the, the second row is going to say, stay the same, so the second row in my multiplier is going to be um, 0, 1, 0. Now, to zero out this element, the idea is I'm going to multiply the second row times a 2 and add it to the first because the multiplier is negative 2. So I'm going to put it 2 here, and I'm adding it to the first. And the third row is found, the multiplier is positive 1, so there will be a negative 1 here, and I add it to the third row. 
So when I do that, the result's going to be no change in the second row, but the first row is going to be found by taking the first row and adding two times the second row, or taking two times the second row and adding it to the first row. Two times zero plus two is two. Two times negative one plus two is zero. Two times two plus negative six is negative two. Two times two is four plus one is five. Two times one plus zero is two, and two times zero plus zero is zero. The last row is found by taking negative one times the second row and adding it to the third row. So we'll take zero times negative one is zero plus zero is zero. Negative one times negative one is one plus negative one is zero. This will be negative two plus three is positive one. Then negative two plus negative two is negative four. Negative one times one is negative one. And negative one times zero plus one is one. So that step is done. Now what I'd like to do is to zero out the elements above the diagonal in the third column. So in this particular case, the last row will stay the same. And now if I want to zero out this element, what I'm going to do is the multiplier is actually negative 2, so I'm going to have a positive 2 in this position. I'm going to add it to the first row. And to zero out this element, the multiplier is 2, so I'm going to have a negative 2 in this position and add it to the second row. Now let's see what I get. The last row will stay the same, so it will be 0, 0, 1, negative 4, negative 1, 1. Now the first row, in order to find it, I'm going to take 2 times the third row and add it to the first. So 2 times 0 plus 2, 2 times 0 plus 0, Two times one plus negative two is zero. Two times negative four is negative eight plus five is negative three. Two times negative two negative one is negative two plus two is zero. Two times 1 plus 0 is 2, so that will be my first row. The second row is going to be found by taking negative 2 times the third row and adding to the second. So I'll end up with negative 2 times 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 2 times 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 2 times 1 plus 2 is 0, and then I have negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8, plus 2 is positive 10. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, plus 1 is 3, and then negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 0 is negative 2. So I, did, I didn't do any mistakes or have any mistakes due to arithmetic. This should be fine.
but I still don't have the identity matrix here. What I'm going to do is I notice now I have a diagonal matrix. I'm going to multiply it by a particular diagonal matrix that will make the left side of my appended system, my appended matrix, the identity matrix. And that would be the diagonal with entries along the diagonal that are the multiplicative inverse of this diagonal's matrix entries. So the values on the diagonal would be 1 half, negative 1, and 1. When I multiply this by the diagonal matrix, I do get the identity. Multiplying the other part of the matrix by the diagonal, the first row gets multiplied by 1 half, and the entries become negative 3 halves, 0, 1, the second gets multiplied by negative 1, so it becomes negative 10, negative 3, positive 2. And the last gets multiplied by 1, so the entries are negative 4, negative 1, and 1. So, I believe that A inverse is the matrix with entries negative 3 halves, 0, 1, negative 10, negative 3, 2, and negative 4, negative 1, 1. To check to make sure I'm correct, if I multiply A times A inverse, I better get the identity. Check. I did, and I believe I'm correct, and the way I did the multiplication was I used rank 1 updates, but you can do it any way you want. Let's go on to part B. Does A, which is this 2 by 2, have an inverse? Justify your answers. There are several ways you can do this, but I like to do it by determining the determinant. If it's non-zero, then it's going to have an inverse. Well, what's the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix? Well, any 2 by 2 with entries A, B, C, D, the determinant, which is often represented by looks like absolute value signs around the um, matrix, it really represents the determinant of this matrix, uh, is A times D minus B times C. So in this case, it's going to be negative 1 times negative 4 minus 2 times 2. Oops, that is 0. Since it's 0, A does not have an inverse. 